Word. How you guys doing? Good. 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 Okay. Good. Good. My name is Adam Rawson. I'm a criminal and DUI defense attorney here, you know, in South Florida. Lived here my whole life. Um, I was in a fraternity up in Gainesville. Okay, so you know, pretty much know all you guys. Or I'm just like you guys, Ben. We Ben and I go way back a few years. Martine and I go way back even longer than that. And I used to be a prosecutor about 10 years ago, and I've had my own law firm for the last 10 years. And what I do is I like coming and speaking to people to really educate you folks on what the DUI laws are, what the criminal defense laws are, how can you party safely, right? And make sure that you understand, because so much of this is, you know, look, we're young, I'm still young, but people don't know the law. The police know the law, they know the procedure, and what the, the best way for you folks is to really know what's going on in their mind and what their head is, okay? What their procedures are, how are they trained? If you have any questions, just raise your hand. It's interactive. We're gonna have one or two people come up and try the field sobriety exercises, just so that way I can show you guys what it's really like. We'll get that, okay? But you got any questions now? No. If you do, okay, perfect, perfect. What's your name? Dylan. Dylan, okay, so Dylan, remind me. What's your name? Tristan, well, we already got our two then. Dylan and Tristan, when the time's ready, we'll, we'll do that. But if you have any questions, feel free, ask. Because this is, this is for your benefit. It's not me here doing some you know, stupid PowerPoint and boring you guys to death. This is the fun shit, right? It's the fun stuff. It's, it's criminal law, okay? <clears throat> um, it is, it is. Well, you know, it's like law and order, okay? So first thing, we're going to talk a little bit about DUI to start, and then we'll, we'll move into drugs. Um, but as far as DUI goes, right, uh, has anybody, okay, I heard um, from talking with Martine, Thursday nights, where do we go? Blue. Okay, right, so that, that's where we go, right? If, okay, well, have you guys ever been there and seen the Boca police just sitting outside? Yeah. Shooting fish in a barrel, right? It's, it's easy, okay? So, first thing is police officers can stop anybody based on probable cause. What does probable cause mean, right? That's kind of like the, like the fancy legal term. Um, anything that gives them reason to assume that you're under the influence. Okay, so it's a good, good answer. Not necessarily in this context, okay, but <clears throat> but it's a good answer, okay. What's your name? No, it's a good Max, okay. Uh, on the topic of that, if you are outside blue and the cops mm -hmm. are there, is reasonable cause then thinking that you look underage? Okay, Pro cause? Like it, it could okay, it could be for them to walk up to you and talk to you, right. okay, especially if they see a drink in your hand. So yes, they they just could. Being outside, like while you're in <clears throat> could they just come up and be like? You really don't look like you're 21. Like, I'm gonna need to see your ID before you even tried to get into like blue. Um, they could, okay. But if they do take your ID, then that's a seizure, and that means then you're not free to leave, and so a bunch of constitutional protections kick in at that point. But as we know, a lot of times the police officers sometimes they they might skirt around that, okay. Um, but in the context of, let's say you're leaving, let's say you've been there, let's say you had a, a few drinks, okay, and you're driving home, and oh, I've done this 15 times, right? No problem, easy. I live two miles away. I could go there in my sleep, you know. Um, and the police are waiting. Okay. What happens if they're, what's your name? Dylan. Dylan. So what happens, Dylan? Let's say they've been scoping you out. They've been watching you. And they're like, ah, oh, this guy, you know, dancing on the bars and, and, and acting all crazy. So, right? Maybe? Maybe? Okay. All right. So Dylan, right? So what happens if they just, they watch you get in the car and they start following you? Right. Okay. Can they stop you? I guess they could. Who said yeah? Okay. What's your name? Ariel. Ariel? Okay. What do you mean? So yes? <coughs> okay. Okay. Good. Who, who disagrees and says no? Can't do that. Okay. Dylan? Okay. Dylan says no. We got a few no's. Who says yeah? I agree with... Okay. <coughs> Who's still not sure? I'm not sure. That's good. But see, look. That's the perfect reason why I'm here because we don't know these things. Right? So what the law says, in 1998, the U.S. Supreme Court, basically, they said the police officer's subjective reasons don't matter, okay? So you look, you know, they're following you. They see four young kids coming back from a, from a concert. Oh, they must be smoking weed, right? We, we're going to stop them. They can't do that. But what they can do is they can wait and follow you and watch you until you go 46 and a 45. They can wait until you do the rolling stop through a stop sign, right, and then stop you. They can wait and see that a taillight's out and then stop you. So it has to be an objective basis, probable cause for to stop you, and they can do that. So if you are already stopped, they can, can they still come up to you and just say, like, I, like how's your night going? Okay, so the question is, is if you're already stopped, can they, can they just come up to you? You mean stopped in the car? 
Yeah, they, the they car, can't the pull. Cars, the cars right. park. They're not pulling us over. Can they just come up to our car? Um, they could come up to your car and initiate a conversation. Yes, just like you're outside, but they can't basically order you to leave. You know, order you to stop. They can't ask for your ID. If okay. they do those yeah, yeah. things, then you're not free to leave. Okay, so you have some of those protections yeah. involved. I know you said going 46 and 45, maybe because uh -huh. it's like traffic laws, but I thought you can go five over the speed limit. Well, they usually okay. give that to you, but no, they can stop you. That's okay. Cool. Right. They can the minute you're the minute you commit any infraction is probable cause. Okay. All right. So they stop you. They smell alcohol. Right. And they're always going to say every single police report I've ever read: red bloodshot, watery eyes, and a flushed face, and the odor of alcohol. Do the cops know how much you've had to drink? No. no. Right. Do they know when you drank it? No. no. Okay. But what the law for DUI says is that they're looking to see if you're impaired. It's not drunk. Okay, so we've all heard of drunk driving, right? DUI, oh, it's drunk driving. You know, you hear the radio ads. They're going to get drunk drivers. It's not. Drunk is here. Impaired, is it higher or lower? Lower. Lower, right? It's, it's lower. Okay, so when you say to an officer, well, I only had two beers, officer. I'm not drunk. Are you helping yourself? No. No. Okay, raise your hand if you're under 21. Okay, so the majority. Okay, okay. Um, put your hand down. Raise your hand if you're over 21. <clears throat> okay, legit, right? Not not what your ID says, right? Okay, so it's legit. Okay, so so probably what eighty percent here under twenty one. For you guys, the the legal limit is 0 .02, which is zero tolerance. Okay, in Florida, if you're over twenty one, it's 0 .08. Okay, driving. for driving, right? No, if you're under twenty one, it's 0 .02, but they call it zero tolerance. Okay, <clears throat> it's sure. Right, so I'll get to that. Okay, I'll, I'll get to that stuff in a little bit. That's a good question. All right, yeah, it's 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 a good question. All right. So as far as this stuff goes, they're gonna stop you. They're gonna ask you questions. Has anybody heard of your Miranda rights? Okay, what does that mean? There you go. What's your name? You've been watching Law and Order. Yeah. All right. That's good. That's good. What, so what's your name? Okay, so Marcelo, so you pretty much know some of the basic Miranda rights, right? Yeah. All right. All right, good. 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 Now, does a, does a cop have to read you your Miranda rights when they stop you and smell alcohol in your breath and start a, and start a DUI? No, yes, yes, yes. No. Anytime you get arrested. Okay, see? Look. And guys, what this, what this means, no, but I love it because we don't know, right? So here's what it is. Miranda rights are triggered when there's a, what's called a custodial interrogation. So first of all, you have to be in their custody. And it's custodial interrogation by an agent of the government. So government is police. School officials, right, or some, you know, don't count for Miranda. Okay, so agent of the government, you have to be in their custody, which does not mean arrest. You can be in their custody when you're not free to leave, such as when they have your driver's license and you're on the side of the road. And obviously you're not going to just say, all right, officer, you're doing this DUI. Well, I'm going home. Fuck you. Goodbye. Right? It doesn't work. Okay? <laughs> right? <clears throat> so custodial. And then they have to ask you questions. So what happens, right? <clears throat> what was your name again? Marcelo. Mar Marcelo. Marcelo. Let's say you're being investigated for... I don't know, for, for any kind of crime, all right? The cops find you, they arrest you, they don't ask you any questions, right? And they just say, all right, we're arresting you, we got enough evidence for, for you know, a battery that you hit your friend, we're taking you to jail. Don't I have to be read my rights? No, because they're not asking you any questions, they're not interrogating you. So there has to be an interrogation, too. You, you can't be free to leave, and they actually have to interrogate you. Question. How's your night going? Consider that, and then they have to Perfect. say it. Perfect. Good, good question. So, for the purposes of DUI, though, you don't have all of your Miranda rights. Okay, so you have these rights for 99% of the crimes out there, except for a lot of the driving crimes. So they're allowed to ask you, "Hey, where are you going? Where are you coming from? Who are you with? How much have you had to drink? Have you been drinking? What have you had?" Basic questions. Now, if it turns on on scene to a full on, you know, they're grilling you about everything and it's lasting a while, <clears throat> then we would file a motion to suppress and say that your Miranda rights were violated. Can but you the give an of that? Sure, basically, okay, what's your name? Logan. So Logan, okay, where are you coming from? Where would you say? Blue Martini, right? Logan, have you been drinking tonight? 
Yes. Right? How much have you had to drink? Two. Right? Everybody says two. Okay? Those things they can ask you. And they don't have to read your Miranda rights. Remember, your Miranda rights are the cops basically saying, shut up, don't talk to me. Right? And what do most people do? They get, raise your hand if you've ever talked your way out of an argument or, or anything. Talked your way out of a speeding ticket. Talked your way out of a fight with a girlfriend. Talked your way out of a fight with your parents. <clears throat> so we've all talked our way out of something before, right? So we're conditioned. Oh, I got my buddy who, man, he was shit-faced. And he just told the cops that he was good and, and he, he got off and they let him go. Right? We've all heard those stories. It really doesn't work now. 2018, South Florida, it really doesn't. But going back to the example, so the cops are going to say, hey, you know, have you been drinking? You know, what have you been drinking? What do you say? Right? So I can tell you, you know, certain things, but let's talk about the real thing. What do you do to protect yourself? <clears throat> well, we've, we've all tried. <clears throat> okay, so let me back up. If you have any alcohol and get behind the wheel, you're screwed. Yeah. Okay, that's, and then kind of more of the health, health and safety part of it too, that's going to be the moral of everything. Um, the only truly way to prevent, or make sure that you don't get arrested for DUI is if you don't drink at all. But let me ask you this. Is it legal to drink and then drive in the yes. state of Florida? Yes. If you're over 21, yes. <clears throat> So long as what? <clears throat> you're under 0.08 and you're not impaired by alcohol. But the whole thing with the legal limit has this much to do with DUI. So I'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, It's mostly impairment. Impairment has to do with 95, 99% of DUI cases. The legal limit is, is at the very end and it, it's, it's very small. So <clears throat> going back to the stuff, right? What do you do? Do you open your mouth or not? Right. Well, we had Logan who said, officer, I only had two beers. I'm not drunk. Did that help Logan? No. no. Not at all. So what do you do? What I recommend is usually just stay quiet. <clears throat> Don't lie. Officer, I only have, I, I'm not drinking alcohol, right? Like they can smell it on you. They know it. Okay. If you lie to them, you've started off right away. You're a liar. And jurors don't like liars. Okay. From, from doing this for so long, jurors have a natural sympathy because a lot of them said, well, I've had a drink or two and, and you know, went home, <clears throat> right? I, we celebrated a graduation party at, at Jay Alexander's and, and had a glass of wine. What do you mean? You know, that, that's a DUI. Come on. But when you are a liar, they don't think like that. They think, oh, he's drunk. He's a liar. What does he have to hide? So what most attorneys will say is <clears throat> just say, officer, my attorney told me not to answer any questions. But don't do it in a smart ass way. Okay, you have to be polite and respectful, right? <clears throat> they, they don't like it. They don't like it, but most DUIs, at least in Boca and Palm Beach County, are on videotape. So you have to understand that. In Broward, they're not. Miami, definitely not. But in Palm Beach County, especially Boca Police, they have a lot of videos. They're rolling out a lot of the body cameras now. So just be polite and just say, Officer, my lawyer told me not to. You know, I have a friend who's a lawyer and he told me not to answer your questions. I'm sorry. Okay, be apologetic. But, uh, I've seen a lot of those kinds of videos where, mm -hmm. like, the first thing that someone behind the wheel says, um, what is it? Oh, I have my fifth amendment. I, uh, <coughs> I, I, I the fifth <coughs> Right. That kind of like That's, don't do that because you, you sound like a smart ass. Yeah. And it's, it doesn't really work because the, the fifth is the right to remain silent and all those things. It, it don't, don't, really don't really overcomplicate it, okay? Don't really overcomplicate it. Just say, my lawyer told me not to answer any questions. That basically is pleading the fifth, makes right okay? It makes <clears throat> well, no, if they start saying, hey, have you been drinking? If they start asking you questions about that stuff. Or let's flip it around. What if they say, you know, hey, can I, can I search your car, right? No. You know, okay? <clears throat> so... You could, yeah, if they ask you, absolutely. Now, DUI is a little different, okay? So let, let me split the DUI and the drugs to make it a little easier because the situations are a little different. But now they're going to say, Logan, I'd like you to step outside the car. I need you to step outside the car because we're going to conduct a, a DUI investigation. Are you going to do it? No. Really? You're, you're just going <coughs> to... Well, well, they're saying, hey, or I would like you to step outside the car. Are you going to get out of the car? Yes or no? No. Yes. Sure. Maybe... Okay. We don't know. There is no right answer. Right. Question. They, they <coughs> say that I did anything wrong. 
Well, they're going to say they smelled alcohol and they, you know, they're going to do a DUI investigation. So, look, when a, when, a cop, when a cop asks you to get out of the car, get out of the car. Okay, you're going to get out of the car either on your feet or your face. Which one's better? Feet. feet. Yeah, okay. So, so get out of the car. That's probably one of the only things that you actually do, that they tell you to do. But now they're going to say, all right, Logan, <clears throat> I would like for you... I need you, they, they can phrase it many different ways, but I would like for you to perform some field sobriety exercises, basic you know, coordination tasks, so I can decide if you're impaired or not. Or they can say, I need you to. Who's going to do them? <coughs> they say they need to? Why? Because a cop, but why? The cop authority, they're telling you? Right, yeah, if they're telling me or if they're asking me or two different things. Okay, all right. Who, okay, well, if they say, I, um, I would like for you to, who's going to say, oh, I'm going to tell that cop, hell no. <clears throat> or who's going to say, well, I might feel a little pressured because they have the badge, right? They have the gun. They got, you know, the, the taser. Not, right? Okay, I'd rather not. Isn't it all, if you deny to do the, like, all the tests, they yeah, will take you to jail, but it gives you time to sober up? Okay, so good question. So we'll, we'll see that. <coughs> Here, one, one more question. It's, it's a good question. So, so the question was, was well, if they'll take you to jail and then it gives you time to sober up. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out in the next few minutes. Let me ask, answer one more question and then we'll, we'll move along though so you guys can understand. So I was told that in the long run it's better to just remain silent versus get a DUI because if you, uh, it was like something along the lines, if you stay silent then they can... They don't, you don't get UI, you don't get UI, but you lose your, your driving suspension for six months. Right. So better, better to stay silent. Okay, yeah. you're close, but, but here's, so let, let's go through with it. So they're going to ask you to do these exercises. First of all, can you say no? Yes. Yes. Is there a legal penalty for saying no? Yes. What? What's the legal penalty? A year suspension and driver's license. No. That's for refusing the breath test. Good, close. <clears throat> There's a difference. What's your name? Chad. Chad, it's a good, good, okay, good try. You lose your license if you don't give the breath test. There is no legal penalty for saying, officer, I don't want to do your little dance, okay? I don't want to do these exercises. What's, yep, no legal penalty. Now, what's the reality? After you say no, what's going to happen? You're going, no, you're going to jail. They're going to arrest you, okay, <clears throat> for DUI. Okay. But how do they know? Exactly. Right. Okay. In the criminal justice system, do I, as your defense lawyer, have to prove you innocent? No. No. The prosecutors have to prove you guilty, and they have to prove you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, which is, if these are the scales of justice, about 95%. So if a jury goes back there and they say, you know what? We think you're probably guilty. Do you win or do you lose? You win. You win. You win because probably it might be here not beyond a reasonable doubt, okay? So again, how do you protect yourself in this situation, okay? <clears throat> well, some people might say, yeah, Adam, but so what? I want to do these exercises. I want to prove that I legitimately only had a beer. Or maybe I had one, you know, I had one drink. It was two hours ago. Of course I can do these exercises, so, right? Some people might say that. Some people might say, well, it's, it's, I had that one drink or two drinks, and then I was drinking water, and I feel fine, so, you know, I'm just going to do them. Right? Who are my two volunteers? Okay, come on up. Let, let's have you guys do them, <clears throat> and let's see how you do. Now, normally, um, what's your name again? Tristan. Tristan. Okay, Tristan, stand right there. Perfect. Um, face me. Face me. <clears throat> okay. And what's your name? Dylan. Dylan. Okay, Dylan. Here, stand right there with feet together. Face me. Now, I got to make sure both of you guys, you're not under the influence of anything, right? No. Okay, you sure? <laughs> sure. Okay. Free workout. All right, you're good. <laughs> right. You guys are good. Good health. No, any, any knee, back, ankle injuries? Knee, back, ankle no. injuries? Okay. Very athletic. It's fine. Well, right, it's okay. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to have you do any walking. All you got to do is stand and balance, okay? okay. Normally, they're going to put you through three to five exercises, right? We're just going to do one. What I want you to do is I'm going to demonstrate. I want you to watch me first, and I'll tell you when to begin. Do you understand? Yep. Okay, you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any questions that you guys have? Negative. Okay. No? Okay, so the exercise that we're going to do is called the finger to nose. It involves you putting your feet together with your arms out, your index fingers pointing out. Yeah, take a, take a step back there too. All right, <clears throat> um, index fingers pointing out, close your eyes and tilt your head back. Now stop, 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 stop. Did they pass or did they fail? Who says they failed? Why? Why? 
instructions Why? Because they didn't wait until the instructions were Simon didn't say start, right? So the oh. officer said, I'm going to do the instructions. I'm going to demonstrate, and I will tell you when to begin. Do you understand? So that officer is going to put in his police report and say, of course he didn't understand because of the alcohol. Because the alcohol is affecting his ability to listen. <clears throat> right? The normal faculty, right? DUI is driving with your normal faculties impaired by, by alcohol or drugs. So your normal faculties are seeing, hearing, walking, talking, judging distances, acting in emergencies, right? Making decisions. So it's mental and physical. So right off the bat, look, 75% of the people in my lectures do that. So not, not so bad, but, but yeah, right? What, now why? Why did you commit this, this horrible thing? Why did you do this? Uh, I think... Well, maybe in the moment, too, you just want to get it done with, get it over, right. so you'll, like, jump to it. Okay. Raise your hand if you've tuned out to me for at least um, 30 seconds so far. Okay, of course, it happens, right? Well, it, I learned by example, so, I mean, I was watching you <coughs> do it, so that I okay. could do it, too, so I could figure it out. Right. Anybody play, you know, high school sports? Okay. Okay. What happens when the coach tells you, especially <laughs> basketball, right hand, right side, right layup, and you dribble down, and you're on the left side, and you go, no, nah, I just want to do it my way. Right? You know, some of us learn differently. Some of us are slower than others. Some of us are faster learners than others. Some of us need to see and do, right? And, and do it over and over and over again before we're good. But you guys are on the spot and, and you're not that nervous right now, right? No. Do you think you'll be nervous on the side of the road? Oh, With yeah. the con cops? Oh, yeah. No? Okay. <clears throat> well, some people say no. I'm honestly like. It's, really a, it's okay. So like I have okay. Okay. <laughs> Some, no, you, really. And that's and that's fine. He's the social guy. <laughs> yeah. Are you the social chair? Yeah. I've taught. No, I wish. <clears throat> okay. Do you think anybody here though might have problems or might be a little nervous? Waba would be really Most, nervous. Look, the I, guy would assume. Definitely, definitely me. Look, I can. I can tell you guys. I'm still nervous when I get stopped for a speeding ticket, right? And I deal with cops every single day. And when I, I deal with them in my job, I'm in charge, okay? And I still get nervous. So it's just kind of, a, for most of us, it's a way of life. But let, let's go back, okay? And let's start over. So watch me, don't start. Okay, feet together, arms out, index fingers pointing out, close your eyes and tilt your head back. Now for the purposes of this though, I need to watch you, okay? Because I can't take my eyes off you. And that's kind of cop code word for, this shit's hard to do, I can't even do it. Okay, but we're going to say right or left. So we say right, you bring the corresponding arm out, touch the tip of your finger to the tip of your nose, bring it back to the side, and then wait for my next command. And I'm going to say left, and it's here, and back and wait for my next command. A lot of, lot of instructions, yeah. right? Okay, you good? Yeah. Okay, but I want you guys to turn a little bit and both face me. <clears throat> okay, close your eyes, tilt your head back, close your eyes, tilt. You, you may begin. Okay, arms out, yep. Close your eyes, tilt your head back, tilt it all the way back, all the way back. Right. <laughs> okay. Left. <laughs> left. No, keep going, keep going. Guys, give, give him like two more and let's see. Okay. Right. <laughs> tilt your head back, keep your head back. Right. <laughs> okay, clap it up. They both failed. <clears throat> now look. Hold up. Now, no, they're not that bad. <laughs> so, they're, they're both not that bad, right? It, relatively minor, but yeah, so what did we see? So, right. <clears throat> a few of them went, a few times they went directly here, right? A few times they went forward, touched, but then held it and then went forward back again, right? Um, I had you guys stand on the side and, and they usually do that for the video because it's a little easier to see balance problems. You guys had good balance, right? Now you kept bringing your head forward a little bit. They wanted all the way back, right? But, you know, with a little bit of alcohol in you, a lot of times the balance is off. Not bad. And then obviously they started too early and, and didn't remember those instructions. <clears throat> but the fact that they're sober, <clears throat> I didn't even make them walk the line. So you have to understand the cops have a nose on their form, okay? And they mark it and they'll say, you touched the nostril, you'll touch the, the bridge, you touched right down here. Also, what if I did this, okay? And I think sometimes some of you guys did, did this a little bit, right? Is that good or is that bad? bad. Why is that bad? Well, okay, but, but right on the tip. Yeah. 
Okay, the tip of my finger to the tip of my nose. Is this the tip? No. This is the finger pad. I've had cases where clients have done it perfectly and the cops have said, no, sir, you use the finger pad. This is the tip, right? And I demonstrated like this, but you guys did this. So it is so petty and so subjective. It can be. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's why I've been doing this for 10 years. Now, look, this isn't for the person that has 15 drinks and is fall down drunk and stumbling and puking all over the place, right? We can all agree. And look, can we all agree? You guys can sit. Thank you. Thank you. Clap it up for them. Clap it up. Give, give me, give me one second. <clears throat> okay. So, so, but think about this, right? Again, going back to the health and safety component of this, knowing that two of our two of our friends just failed and I put them through one of the easier ones out of the five didn't even make them walk imagine if they had two drinks in them three drinks in them how are they gonna look right <clears throat> okay so understand that the only way to guarantee that you can't get arrested for DUI is to not drink at all even though the law says you're if you're over 21 you're allowed to have some alcohol in your system you just can't be drinking and driving, you know? Think about that for your parents. You know, again, celebrating a graduation, celebrating a birthday. They might have a glass of wine or two over a, th over a two hour dinner with food. They can get arrested for DUI. All right? <clears throat> now, let's move on to the breath test. So, notice how we haven't talked about the breath test yet? Okay. If you're over 21, they cannot give you a breath test before you've been arrested. It'll never me be mentioned in a police report. If you're under 21, they can give you the little juice box one. Okay, the one that's about, you know, it's about the size of a juice box, and they can ask you to blow into the portable breath test. But if you're over 21, it doesn't happen. All right? You have to be arrested in Florida before you, they can ask you for a legal breath test. So let's say a cop pulls you over his suspicion to believe that you were under the influence of alcohol. Right. You might smell it, whatever. Even though you 100% sober, haven't been drinking, uh, he makes you do the... Um, Field sobriety test. Right. Fail. Remember, he can't make you. You can say no. Okay. But let's say you do it anyway. Well, like, you do it him anyway. Do it, <coughs> right. He fails you. Right. But you have no. You have no alcohol in your system. You okay. Point zero. They like. They would they arrest you even though you haven't been drinking. <coughs> so it could be. So it could be drugs, and I'll get to drugs in a little bit. Drugs are a lot harder to detect than than alcohol. You know, um, if it's, you know, Xanax, if, it, if there's no alcohol involved, Xanax, weed, any, any kind of, you know, legal or illegal drug, um, it's a little harder, it's less frequent. And most of the time it's alcohol. But I've had at least, let's see, I've had two clients, I'll get to you in a second, two clients who were arrested for DUI had no alcohol, no drugs in their system. Two in 10 years, okay? It's rare, but how shitty was that for those two clients? Yeah. Okay, terrible, terrible. They did, but, but what I tell people is, look, I can do a great job, get the charges dropped, but the damage is done, right? Cops have a saying, you can beat the rap, but you can't beat the ride, okay? You can beat the criminal charge, but you can't beat going to jail. Mug shots online, right? Think about that for you guys. How damaging is an arrest? Forget about what happens, <clears throat> right? 90% of the damage is done upon getting arrested, having to hire a lawyer, getting that mug shot, right? Having to explain this stuff. And sure, we get great results later. That's, that's wonderful, but... The whole point of this is to not get arrested. It's very difficult, um, near impossible, near impossible. Okay, so <coughs> question. Just Florida. So this stuff is just Florida law. But understand this: what's going on in the cop's mind, right? Why is this that you're going to get arrested? Why is it so easy for them to arrest you for DUI? You know, in 2010, or right? I'm sorry, in 2018. Why? Okay, two things you get, bless you, two things you guys need to know, right? Probable cause, cops arrest based on probable cause, okay, so, which is, is very low. We talked earlier about beyond a reasonable doubt, right? We talked about that. That's very high. That's a high, I'll get to you in a few minutes. That's a high standard. Probable cause is very low. Cops only need probable cause to arrest you. It's about 40% guilt, okay? <clears throat> How much money do you think the DUI cops make? The Boca, Boca police, Boca D, the DUI cops, their, their task force, what's a lot? A lot's relative, right? Uh, at least 
would say 75 to 100K. A okay. Year. Who, who else? So, uh, are, you, are you talking about salary or per, like, right How up? much do they make per year? Just what, are they, what do they clear? What do they clear per year? Oh, 45, 45. 45. What do they clear? What do they... Just no. How much money? Just how much 75. money? I'm a DUI cop. How much money do I make per year? Forty-five. We've heard seventy-five, sixty. What if I told you a hundred to one hundred fifty grand? Sign me up. Okay. No. Here's why. It's not quotas. It's not quotas. It's not bokeh. It's everywhere. Cops get. First of all, DUI is usually a specialty unit. Maybe they're making sixty. They're getting paid time and a half any time that they have to testify in court, show up at a deposition when they're not working. So the school cop that's doing radar, right, making sure you guys are going the school speed limit at 9 a.m. when you have to go to court for your ticket at 11 a.m., are they still on shift? They're still working, right? They're not getting paid overtime. But the cop who works nights, the DUI cop, who then has to show up in my office at, at noon or show up for a trial at 9 a.m. when they're supposed to be sleeping, they get paid overtime, okay? Every single arrest based probable cause, which is very low, okay? based on their opinion. So we had our two friends here, right? Was it a fact or an opinion that they didn't do so well? Uh, it's my opinion, it's an opinion. right? <clears throat> Whether or not you guys are impaired, your normal faculties are impaired, it's an opinion. Are you guys able to decide and talk about how I normally do things? My normal faculties now? No. Why? But I've been talking for what, 30 minutes? Do you guys know how I normally am? No. no. Right? Why not? You don't know me. It's been 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Have you ever met somebody and you thought that person was awesome and then it turned out to be a piece of yeah. shit? Right? Yeah. I said that to somebody and she goes, I married the son of a bitch. Right? So first impressions are often wrong, right? So understand these things. That the cops, in the cop's mind, they have a lot of other issues and other things going on. They're not going to let you go. You get back to the station. They ask you to give a breath test. Do you give it? You have to? You have to? Okay. Who says you have to? Okay. Who says, no, you don't have to? Is there a, okay, is there a legal penalty for saying, officer, I don't want to do this? Yes. What? No, yes, no. You get, charged you get charged. You've already been charged. You've already been arrested. Okay. <clears throat> the minute on scene, you're getting arrested, no matter what. Handcuffs are coming on. Okay, 99 out of 100 times. Now they're going to take you down to Boca Police and they're going to say, hey, right, or PBSO, it could be Fort Lauderdale, it could be BS, Broward Sheriff's Office, they're going to say, we want a breath test. You're going to give us one or not. Okay? Notice the breath test wasn't done on scene. Now just for records? No, no it, it's, it's part of their procedure. Okay? It's part of the law and part of the procedure. Now they're asking for a breath test. There is a penalty for saying no. What's the penalty? Someone said it earlier. You said it earlier. Suspended for a year. Your license is suspended for a year. Who needs their license. Wait, even if you are sober? Well, I'm talking about you've had a drink. You've had two. You have some alcohol in your system. Okay, but what okay. if you're sober and you deny it? If, you've, well, if, if, sober, if you deny it, it makes sense. if you deny it, you lose your license for a year. Okay, so let's, let's flip around all the different scenarios. <clears throat> you say no, you lose it for a year. You say yes and you blow over, what happens? You lose your license for six months. The cops don't tell you that. What happens if you say yes, and you blow, and you blow under the legal limit? Who says, thank you, officer, I'm going home? No. Who says you're going to go home right away? No. 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 Are you going to be unarrested? No. 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 Nope. You're, you're in jail for eight hours no matter what. You're booked. You are arrested for DUI no matter what, even if you blow under the legal limit. Then the next step is they're going to say, you know, I thought, I thought you were on some drugs. Give me a urine test. And you see how they keep going and going and going after you. What if you, what if you blow a point zero? No, They're asking for a urine, because now all of a sudden they think you're on drugs. The urine sample is going to take about 30 to 60 days to come back. You've already been arrested, right? And what happens if you smoked weed yesterday? Right? Not necessarily but it, it's not good. Okay, hold on, hold on. So hold on, give me, give me a sec. It's not good. Right? But now, in what the officers tell you, they don't tell you all three scenarios. All they tell you is what the law requires them to tell you, which is, give me this or lose your license. They don't tell you that when you blow twice the legal limit, that you're going to lose your license for six months and then give them overwhelming evidence against you. Right? They don't tell you that. Okay? So what do you do? Right? What's the best thing to do? What do you guys think? 
Obviously, yes. But but other than that, if that does happen, you're twenty, you're twenty-two, yeah, again, you have you have a beer with dinner, right? You go to a football game, you're there for four hours, and you have three beers over four hours at a football game and you drive home. What do you do? Do you give this breath test or not? Right? What do you guys think? Yeah. Wait, so at the at the point where you blow the zero zero and then they ask for a P test, uh -huh. if you deny the P test, is it the same penalty? That is also a refusal. So if you can't whip it out in front of me, right, that's a refusal, okay? Now, if you ask the cop questions, if you don't know the answer uh -huh. to these, are they required to give you the answers? They're not required to give you the answers. Most of them will give you the answers. So, you know, and, and I like when my clients ask these questions because it shows that you're not impaired. It shows that you're making an intelligent decision. So I can use that, you know, if that ever happens. Hold on, give me a sec. Um, but, but yeah, so that's a good question. But think about it. Most of you guys will... I've had, I, we had a question before who said, well, how much is 0.02 and how much is 0.08, right? What they say is that, you know, one average normal shot, one 12 ounce normal beer, not the craft beers and any of that stuff, right? And one five ounce glass of wine all, you know, should for a normal person raise your blood, your blood or breath alcohol level 0.02, but it doesn't work like that. How many of us are normal? We're not normal. All of us are average, right? If you combined all of us, statistically, we'd, we'd have an average. But none of us here are that average, are we? No, we're all different. What if you ate, right? What if you didn't eat? What if you worked out, right? Where's my workout guy? Tristan, right? right what if you worked out that day, right? It all, what if you're on, on other medication, non, you know, not narcotics, but just other medication? All these things have, you know, have an interest or can, can um, affect everything. How many of you go to, right, have ever been to a bar and you see somebody me uh, measure out the shot? W you know, when I see that, when I see that, I go, shit, I'm not spending $12 to make, to have some bartender measure me a shot. I'm going to flirt with her and make sure that I'm getting like two or three drinks in there, you know, whatever, right? Because if I'm spending 12, 15 bucks, I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm getting, you know, some alcohol, right? What happens if you have a 16 ounce or 20 ounce craft beer that has 10% alcohol? So a lot of us don't know how much we've had to drink. You ever had a, seen a girl go, oh, I only had one glass of wine, and it, and it was like a big gulp, right? It, it was this big, and I only had one glass of wine, right? Like, like the Dunkin' Donuts cup, right? So a lot of us don't know how much we've had to drink. Don't play that game of trying to figure it out. So what Question. happens if you go, let's say, a trip to Colorado, you come back, like you're over the age of that. Okay, so you go to Colorado, you, okay, you go there, you come, you bring some weed back. No, no, no. no. <coughs> You smoke while you're there, yeah. but you're a Florida resident. Yeah. It's legal where you are. So Amsterdam, Colorado, wherever you go, as long as you do it there, you can't bring it back. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you so you get arrested for DUI a week later, and it's still it's still in your system. Okay. There's ways that we can defend it, right? Okay. With the urine test, that's a little more complicated, but there's plenty of ways to defend it. My purpose of this more is just a, kind of giving you guys a, a good thorough overview and making sure that it doesn't happen, right? Prevention, but yeah, there's, there's plenty of things that we can do to defend it, plenty, plenty, plenty of things. Um, before I move on to, to drugs and some, some of that stuff, um, let me talk a little bit about the DUI penalties. DUI is expensive, okay? Um, Florida is one of only two states that makes you carry this special type of insurance if you get convicted of a DUI. It's gonna cost you about 12 grand over three years, okay? For insurance? Just for insurance. Just for insurance. Lawyers are expensive, right? Good ones. We, we charge a good amount of money. There's minimum fines, $500 fine minimum. Court costs $500 minimum. They, and they put you through the ringer of all these things that you need to do. Schooling, testing, treatment. Okay, they put a boot on your car. They can put a breathalyzer in your car. All these things cost money, time, and it's aimed to, you know, obviously prevent this from ever happening again. So DUIs are, uh, overall DUI could cost you 20 grand. Easy. Okay, question. Uh, back to the story. Of you uh -huh. already, I'm over 21. I'm okay. Booked, okay. And you said before that they want to breathalyze. Breath, 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 yeah. Breath. Yeah, they're going to ask you to give a breath test. It's better to say no uh -huh. because then I lose my license for a year okay. versus if I say yes and I'm over. Then you lose it for six months. Plus a DUI on my like, or is it well, well, you're getting a DUI both. It's oh. can we defend it? So here's the, here's the decision. Right? 
You give this test, now you've given them physical evidence against you that they're going to use against you, right? Then they're going to tell the jury, hey, he had a 0.12. He had a 0.17, right? Versus a refusal, they don't have that evidence. Now, are you really losing your license for six months or 12 months? The answer is no. So if it's a first DUI, and this stuff's important, because the cops are threatening you with this, and right, you're going, oh shit, I can't lose my license. What do I, I, I got to, all right, I'll take the DUI, because I know I'm over and I can't lose my license. Well, no, that's not the right thing to do. Someone else said, what about just sobering up? Okay, it's, don't worry about the whole sobering up thing. If you refuse, and if you give a breath test, either way, there's ways, very easy for me, or for lawyers, if you act right away, within the first 10 days, to get you a hardship license, so your school, you're going to church, temple, right, whatever we got, right, you're going to anything if you have, you know, for older people, if you have kids, right, anybody here, nobody here has kids, right, hopefully not, anybody, okay, right, okay, work, you can go to work, what, okay, <clears throat> you can go to work, right, so you could do those things the entire 12 months, but do the cops tell you that you can have that for the entire 12 months of your refuse, no, no, if you ask them about it, they maybe will tell you if you get a nice cop, but most of them, they don't have to tell you that. It's you refuse or you know, give it to me or refuse and lose your license for a year. They don't tell you, oh, you'll get a hardship. You'll do this, this, and this. Hire a lawyer right away and you'll be okay. You know, and you'll have a, a better case of beating it. No, they don't tell you that. I can't tell you that, but think about it. So what'd you say? Refuse the breath of Okay, right? Sounds smart to me when you break down all the options, doesn't it? Right, okay, all right. Uh, <clears throat> does it does right refuse everything right, right. Yeah. why would you cooperate you why would you cooperate when when they're just trying to arrest you so why like i know someone asked this question already why do you, why do they do it at the station and uh -huh. not here so like if they do it on the scene versus when you go back uh -huh. you're gonna sober up a little more a little more, bit a little bit more well you okay so you're gonna sober up a little bit sure what happens if you took two shots and then drove home right Anybody ever been to a bar and had a shot or two or a drink or two right before they left and went home? Okay, so now your body is actually metabolizing it as you're going to jail and you're actually going to blow higher. So it's not always sobering up. You know, it depends on when you drank. It depends on so many different factors. It's, it's way beyond even, you know, like I know it because I have to, but it's, it's complex chemistry and, and all, that, all that stuff. A um, little bit about drugs. First of all, the weed oil, felony, okay? Misdemeanor weed, okay, 20 grams, so three quarters of an ounce is a misdemeanor. Over three quarters of an ounce, felony. Up to five years in prison. Any of the oil, <clears throat> felony, okay? So big thing now with the oil, okay? You gotta be very careful about that. If you get convicted of any drug crime in the state of Florida, you're having a barbecue at your parents' house, you got a little bit of weed in your pocket, you get arrested, forget about how, why, or if it's legal, but you get arrested, and let's say you get convicted. You're gonna lose your driver's license for a year. Who came up with that law, right? Like, how stupid is that? But that's something that you need to know. Any drug crime, if you are convicted, adjudicated guilty, you will lose your driver's license for a year. When you say convicted, okay. that. Right, there's many ways to not be convicted. There's drug court, Right? There's ways to get what's called a withhold of adjudication um, where you know, it counts against you but you're not formally convicted. Okay? So there's a lot of ways to prevent being convicted of it. But the damage is done, right? You, know, you can lose federal, um, if you have a drug crime on your record, even weed, I'll get to you, sorry. <clears throat> you can lose you know, any um, federal student aid that you have. Okay? You obviously, you know, jobs, mug shots, all those things, it, it plays a factor. You had a question? Yeah, could you still get a hardship license As, as a DUI. So you only lose your license if you get convicted. So it's not upon like immediate arrest. It's when the case is over, you would lose your license. Okay. And that's only if you get convicted. And for the year you can, but you have to go at least 30 days without driving at all. And it's, it's just a mess. It's a nightmare. Okay. Um, we had another question back there. So my brother would have a drug arrest and I don't know the exact Here, you can lower your hand. He got Okay. So that's good. Right. It depends what kind of background check. So an expungement, there's certain crimes that you can get sealed or expunged. It's one time only, right? Um, 
it will come back on a level two background check, government level access, they're gonna find it no matter what. You wanna be a lawyer, a doctor, you wanna be a nurse, you want any kind of professional association, you still have to disclose it. Okay, you wanna be a teacher, you wanna be a coach, you still have to disclose it even if it has been expunged. Anything else normal, normal jobs, normal people, they shouldn't be able to find it, but you can't get it off Google. All you're gonna do is get it off Boca Police, PBSO, you know, you're gonna get it off the, off the clerk's site, but when you type in your name, and if you don't, you know, if you have a unique name, it's still going to show. Google Images, boom, right there. You know, um, it, it's going to be there. You had a question? Uh, okay, well, that's good. Um, it's very difficult. It's extremely, it's extremely, extremely, extremely difficult. I mean, it's Google. Okay. Well, well, a lot of the reputation management companies, what they do is they don't really remove it. They just push other good content so the bad stuff goes to like page 20. Okay, it's very difficult, very expensive. It, it you know, it, it is, it's difficult and expensive. You had a question again? Uh, two questions. One, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen all of those websites where it's like, oh, check your background, check yada, yada, uh -huh. yada, pay the 1299 or whatever right. it is. Is there like, you know of, I don't know, if there, is there like a real s solid, Maybe like a government page? A well, government page I can check? Don't well, private companies, they'll go on the like, government page and steal, take the picture. And then well, yeah, so look, the there's Boca stuff. Busted. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ones. Like Florida Mugshots, they say pay us 300 bucks and we'll remove it. They're making money, yeah. okay? Then there's Boca Busted, who's, a, who's an ex-cop who's just pissed off and says, I don't take money, I'm doing this to f*** with everybody. And it's perfectly legal especially if it's not hosted in Florida. They just host it overseas, host it in Sri Lanka or anywhere else, and good luck. You're not getting off Boca Busted, okay? Well, Sorry. Well, yeah, Google it, um, okay. you know, and send them some nasty emails. Like, 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 let's say I want to run a background check on myself before right. I apply for jobs. Okay. That would be the way I go about that. Uh, oh, it's easy. I mean, any of been verified is pretty good. Um, you know, you can just look on the clerk of the court's websites, but binverified.com is usually pretty good. There's some other ones. Accurate.com is usually a little better than that. That's usually that's what we use. You know, it's, that's owned by uh, LexisNexis now, and there's some there's some other ones, but it's pretty easy. You know, you can just Google it too. You know, but I was also told that if you get a felon on your record, you use, you lose your right to vote. If, you're con if you get convicted of a felony, you lose your right to vote, lose your right for public office, you lose your right to own a gun, or possess a gun, Ooh. any of those things. So yeah, it's, it's pretty serious. Like the thing of oil on you is, so like if you get uh -huh. and you have a, a napkin on you, you uh -huh. lose your right to vote. Yeah, you're going to get arrested for a felony. Okay, now you could. Now look, there's plenty of ways to not lose your right to vote. Good lawyers can, we have a lot of options. But again, it's something, sure, right? Think about this. This happens to you. You get a felony, you get a mugshot, you're spending, or right, you or your parents spending a lot of money on me, we get a great result, and then we seal it afterwards. Okay, but a lot of the damage is already done, right? You know, so <clears throat> now how do we prevent some of this stuff? So let's talk about this, okay? This, so this stuff's important. So we're, we're all young here. How many of you guys could say, go back home and say, yo, mom, dad, my girl's coming over, we're gonna f for a little bit and smoke some weed. <laughs> Anybody? Okay, so we always have a few, right? Okay, but most of us not, right? So us, so us young people, where do we do drugs? Right, well, if we can't do it at parents' house, car, the beach, right? Where do we f if we can't do it at home? Like, what do we do in high school? In the car, hotel, right? We're not, some people don't get, right? 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 <clears throat> okay, do you have more protections? No, but... This is good stuff. Do we have more protections at home or more protections on the beach, in a car, in a park, walking on the street? So a lot of this, there, you know, look, there, there's some race and some gender factors as far as who gets arrested, but more so, I believe it's socioeconomic status. It's money, money and age, right? Do you think, right, do you think rich athletes, rich black athletes, Right. They don't get arrested as much, do they? No. no, because where are they doing their drugs? Where are they partying? In the, but where, right, and where's their home? Gated communities, mansions, same thing as the white rich people, right? Same thing as the Hispanic rich people, right? But where do young people do things? Where do poor people do things? Out on the street, they're in the open, the chances of getting arrested are a lot higher. So you gotta be careful with all this stuff. You really gotta be careful. Cops can search your car without your consent if they see drugs or smell drugs, okay? So if they see drugs in the open, if they smell drugs, they can search, they don't need your consent. They can also bring a canine, okay? 
without your consent. They can bring, I'll get to you. I'll get to you next. They, they'll, they'll bring it, okay? They can bring a canine. Now, legally, they can't keep you on the side of the road for an hour while they're waiting for a canine, but if that, no, they, they can't. That's illegal. Does that mean a cop's going to say, oh, you know what, sir? Um, all right, it's been, it's been an hour. We're going to let you go. <laughs> right? You think they're going to do that? No. no. So again, that's where I come in later to help, but the damage is already done. What if you know it's been an hour? Like, you're, you're, you're not, there, there don't ever smart, hour? don't ever like be a smart ass to a cop because it's not going to, you know, there's a bigger difference yeah. between saying, I, I don't want to say anything versus, oh, I know this and I know that. Okay, that's not good. You had a question? What if? Okay. Like, at what point do they have the right to search your, your actual body? <clears throat> okay. Because what if they smell it? Right. It's set them letting them search your car. Right. If you step out, it's technically not a so, car anymore. So, here's where officers lie. Look, most police officers, they don't plant drugs. Okay? Some do, but most don't. And look, there's very good officers out there, too. I'm not anti-cop. I'm anti-bad cop. I'm also anti-bad lawyer. I'm, you know, it, it is what it is. But what they do lie about is the probable cause to search you, to, okay, to stop you. They're going to say that they saw drugs or smell drugs when they didn't because they have a hunch that there's four young kids driving around town, coming back from a concert or wherever, and it's late, and it's going to have the hunch, and they're going to bully you. Okay? <clears throat> they're going to bully you. Um, sometimes, even if they do that and their hunch is right, we can still beat the case. Other times, it makes it difficult. But there are some judges that will believe you. Okay, and there are some things. So, so that, that's a good question, but what do you do, right? So a lot of times these cops will say, oh, well, he gave consent. He said I can search it. Well, they have, car, not your or, or the, they might say, well, he told me I can search him. Or they're going to say he was sweating and nervous and looking all around. So I saw, and I saw a bulge in his pocket, and it looked like it could have been drugs or a gun. So for my safety, I had to get him out of the car and pat him down. If true, that's legal. They're allowed to do that. Okay? If true, it's legal. Is that statement, does that like have any value to it? Does What's it have consent to a search and seizure? Or is that just dying out? It's better to say that. Yeah. No, it's always better. You, you never... Yeah, it is, it is better because... Okay, so here, this is a great question. So, so I, this I want everybody to listen to because this stuff, this is very important and relevant. So the question was, what if I know I don't have anything on me and I consent to a search, right? Okay. Well, how many people in this room have driven your car? Anybody? You ever let anybody borrow your car? Any, okay, anybody here let any of their friends borrow their car? <clears throat> okay, what happens if you drive anybody here? Okay, so what happens if one of your friends, right, has a Xanax fall out of their pocket in the passenger seat? Do you know it? No, you're not going to know, right? But yet it's going to be there. They're going to find it. And who are they going to pin the, pin the blame on? You. Look, I had a client. He was hanging out with his ex-girlfriend. Okay? She just had a, a BBL, Brazilian butt lift, from Dr. Miami. If you guys are on Snapchat and see that. She did. All right? And she had it. Yeah. Okay? And she had Percocet. And she had it in her back. And, and she took it with her. And she put it in her, in her friend's or her ex-boyfriend's backpack. Okay? He didn't know it. They got into a fight. They went on a boat and then they got into an argument and she stormed off and left. The next day he gets stopped by a cop and says, sure, you can search. I don't have anything. Sure, you can search the backpack. I don't have anything. They found the Percocet. It wasn't in her pill bottle. He got arrested for a felony. Okay? Happens all the time. Now, what happens if you have seven grams? Seven grams of Percocet. Okay? <clears throat> That's drug. Seven grams is the, is the smallest amount for drug trafficking. So the bond's going to be 75 grand, okay? You're going to be arrested for drug trafficking with a three-year mandatory minimum. How many pills are seven grams? So anybody knows anything about Percocets? Let's say they have a five, five milligrams of Percocet, 500 milligrams of Tylenol, okay? That's a common Percocet, okay? How much of that pill is Percocet? Less than 5%. Five milligrams out of 505. Right? The state of Florida weighs that entire pill as it's 500 milligrams wow. of Percocet. So really, how many do you need to get to seven? 14? 14 pills. Okay. Well, it's, it's 90, pretty much 95% Tylenol. Five, when you take a Percocet, it's 95% Tylenol, 5% oxycodone. 
Okay, yet they're weighing it. The state of Florida is weighing that as if it's pure oxycodone. 14 pills gets you drug trafficking charges. Three year mandatory minimum. Okay, so a lot of this stuff, you know, you just gotta know. A um, little different for Xanax, okay, but one Xanax is still a felony, okay, without a prescription. One Xanax is still a felony, okay? So there, it, it's a little, all the drugs are a little different, but yeah, these are things that, again, you know, we need to know about. Look, I, I did all this shit, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, luckily, I never got caught. A lot of my friends did, okay? But you got to know this stuff. Plenty of people have been falsely convicted of crimes based on, you know, whether it's corrupt cops, whether it's false eyewitness testimony. You have good people who say, oh, I saw something, you know, and they really didn't. Or they saw something, but then they, their brain processed it in a different way. Okay, Google the Innocence Project. There's been hundreds of people across the country that were on death row that they found out didn't, yeah. didn't do it. Yeah. It's pretty serious yeah. shit, you know? Yeah, okay, Pr real, real, real serious stuff. Prison Break's a good show. I forgot you touched up on it, but is there a, uh, is there a penalty for not consenting to a search? So if you say, so no, there's no penalty for not consenting to a search, okay? Like in a drug case or just a stop, you know, you can say, officer, I don't want you to search. Now, they can try to bring the, dr the, the dogs. They can do it anyway. And if they find something, that obviously the reports are going to say that they smell drugs, they saw drugs, or that you consented. You know, they're going to fudge the reports a little bit, okay? Look, anybody have a camera in their car? Okay? Anybody have like a, like a GoPro or a Garmin or something like that? Best thing to have. Okay, best thing to have in your car. Okay, because I've had cases, multiple cases, where having that in your car, can, yeah, uh huh, yeah, and they make them, they make them that face you, they make them that face you and face out, right? Those things can help. Um, the audio, video, you know, for for three hundred bucks, it's worth it. Um, the peace of mind to at least know that you know nobody. Well, the cops can still mess with you, but at least then you can have that evidence. All right, so Google it. I mean, there, there's some really good ones. There's some really inexpensive ones. But yeah, I mean, that, that's huge. Think about the technology that we have um, every day, okay? You don't know how many times I've had cases, whether it's, you know, drunken disorderly, DUI, bar fight, where, you know, they're out there on the, on the cameras and we get it and the case, you know, goes from, from bad to good like that because you, have, you got a cop saying, turn that off or doing something that they're not supposed to, right? And we have the video. I mean, look at the, the you know, it's 2018. Everybody has a, an HD camera in their pocket. So, question? Um, so, saying we're kind of like police, but more towards DSA. Okay. Um, let's say, for example, like you go to LA and then you buy something and they'll accidentally bring you through the DSA, but you get a with it. Mm -hmm. What are the TSA rules? I've read a bunch of different yeah. stuff. Okay. The, so, I don't know the exact TSA rules, but that's. Technically, it could be a fel you know, a federal felony transporting drugs through state lines. You don't want to do it. Now, are you the big threat? No. But could you get arrested? Absolutely. Are they going to? Probably. So answer this question. If you're asking yourself, am I going to get arrested? The answer is always, if you get caught, 99.9, .9, yes. Right? So you got to be extra careful with those. And what if you just forget? You got to be careful, right? Especially if you're, you forget and you're in his car, Tristan's car, right? And he gives consent, boom, he's screwed, okay? So we have all those things that can happen. So when you're taking a video, can a cop, like, tell you to turn it off? <coughs> like, you said that the dash cam in your car, uh -huh. you get pulled over, you have to let them know that you have it in your car. You know, you <coughs> so you're not allowed to surreptitiously uh, audio record, hide, okay? If it's in plain sight, you're fine. Okay, <clears throat> they can, but they, but you have a right to videotape them. Okay. It no, no, you're allowed. Okay, you're allowed to video. If they're in a public place, they have no expectation of privacy. Okay. Now the audio taping portion could be illegal, but the videotaping portion is not. Okay. So now, but practically though, cops don't like that. So I would say stay back a little bit. You know what I mean? You don't need to hide it, but just stay back. You don't want to be involved. Okay. But having this dash cam in your, in your car, it's, it's your car. It's a dash cam. They you have, said, cops have a dash cam. Some of them. If it's in plain sight, you don't have to tell them that you're recording? No, no, no. If it's in plain sight, no. Okay. Yeah. When you say plain sight, do you mean what? I mean, what? 
I can I use my phone and put it on the ledge and say, I just want to record this? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can. So, so the question is, what if I take out my phone and put it there and just say, officer, I'd like to record this, right? Now, they could tell you no. You know, look, I had a DUI case. Three years ago, we went to trial. My client did that. He took out his phone and said, look, officer, I'm filming this because you're violating my rights. And the cop said, oh, you don't need that. Let me grab that. You don't need that and turn it off. And that officer, we went to trial. And that officer swore to tell the truth, told the jury, oh, I had no problem with filming. <laughs> and I had a field day with him. And we won. I made him look like a complete liar, complete idiot. The jury pretty much was like, you know, they, they apologized to my client for this. You know? So, yeah, let, let the cop, you know, smash your phone. Let the, I mean, obviously, right? We don't want that to happen. But if he does, if he grabs it out of your hand, if he yells at you, that, that's good. Because if the footage is saved, we can use that and show that, hey, what, officer, why wouldn't you want this on camera? Right? Okay, yeah. I mean, it can happen. You can. Well, and look, the, the best dash cams, they have protection so that way the card can't be open. There's a lock on them. Uh, black view is, I've looked in a black view. That one's actually really good. Okay, they, and you know, some of them have the cloud service. So let them smash it. Okay, so you get a cloud service, you know? Right, right. So, but yeah, I mean, look, you know, we could say what if all night, you know, we could talk about this stuff to midnight, but, but um, let's go, let's go one more question. Is that good, Martin? We'll go, we'll go one last question. Anybody? Okay, right, so realistically speaking, like, so I have a mugshot, but like, I'm telling them I haven't been arrested in my line. Because sometimes it'll be like, like on job application, have you been convicted? Right. No, I got dropped. Right. I got dropped. Right. I still have a mugshot. So right. Okay, so you're allowed to say no if it's been expunged. Okay, if it's been expunged, you're allowed to say no. Now look, it depends what the job is, right? It depends what the crime was for. So I usually tell my clients, well, yeah, legally you're allowed to say no. But practically, do you still want to disclose it or not? It, it just depends, you know? And, and I always tell my clients, I'm like, look, if it's however long, call me. Let me, you know, ask me the question, the, sp the specific way it's worded, and, and we'll talk, and I'll give you, you know, my advice. But, mm -hmm. Right. Well, well, let me tell you my opinion on this, okay? So my opinion is if anybody came to me for a job, anybody said, yeah, Adam, I want to be a lawyer, I want to work for you, I want to intern, whatever. If any of you guys have any crime of theft or violence, no. Hell, it's not just no, it's hell no. Because it's, it's and that's for most employers. Because it's, it's my business, my reputation online. Imagine if clients' money goes missing and they found out that I hired you with a theft, a shoplifting charge on your record. I'm getting sued for negligent hiring now. Right? What happens if you get physical with a client? I'm getting sued for negligent hiring. You got a weed charge? I don't give a shit. I'm hiring you if, if, if you're the best guy. If you had a DUI, okay, I'd still hire you as long as you're the best person. You know, as long as you're not showing up drunk, as long as you're not, you know, you know, showing up high or anything like that. But that's me. I think that's the way most people would be these days. It depends on the industry, depends on the person, you know. But for me, theft and violence are always a guaranteed no's. Can't do it. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you guys. Look, I'll stick around if you guys have any questions. Okay. But, but thank you. Yeah.